a real shortcoming in a lot of video card designs is the cooler itself. You know, this is a 6850 I bought about six months ago, and uh, I guess it idles around 30 degrees Celsius, but once I put it under any sort of load, it gets up to around 60 degrees Celsius, so I'd like to ideally keep it under 50 or 55. So I'm going to see if I can lower the temps a little by installing this aftermarket cooler I pulled off my old 9800 GT uh, that stopped working on me a little while ago. Uh, this is just the Cooler Master Accelero S1. We have an S2 now, but it's a fairly recommended cooler, but as long as you get something by a reputable company that has a big heat sink on it, you should be alright. To replace the stock cooler with the aftermarket cooler, I'm going to be using some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, any stuff should work. Uh, just try and find the highest percentage you can. And uh, we'll also be using some coffee filters or some other sort of lint-free cloth. Coffee filters are just cheap. They work well and they're disposable, so that's why I use them. Uh, a tool or something, like a screwdriver to take your card apart with, just whatever you need to use. Uh, some thermal compound to replace the thermal compound that is on the main processor part of your video card. I'm using Arctic Silver 5. It's pretty good stuff. A lot of aftermarket coolers come with these little kind of miniature heat sinks that go on the array of chips around your main processor. There's usually like eight of them or so. And, uh, you know, so, some of these will come with an adhesive applied to them. I don't really like that stuff. I've actually had that adhesive fall off before. So I would personally recommend uh, taking some 400, 400 grit sandpaper, sanding that adhesive off, using some degreaser, and just giving it a wipe down, and then finishing it up with some rubbing alcohol just to clean off any sort of residue left behind by the degreaser. And uh, then you have a nice smooth, flat surface that you can apply something like this. This is a two-part epoxy type uh, thermal adhesive made by Arctic Silver. It's Arctic Alumina. It's, uh, you know, it's not the cheapest stuff, but it should work alright. And if you are using that stuff, also make sure you have a plastic mixing surface and a plastic mixer of some type. So, with that out of the way, let's uh, disassemble this card and get going. Usually the video cards have uh, four screws that hold the heatsink on, so I'm just going to take those off. And then without too much trouble, you should be able to just wobble your heatsink free. Once your video card cooler is off, you can soak some of your coffee filter in some of that isopropyl alcohol I showed you earlier, and then just go ahead and uh, start wiping down the main chip. I'm also going to use the plastic mixer I have to scrape up the excess compound around the chip. Use the same technique to clean off everything else as well. If you are using thermal adhesive to hold on these little guys, uh, just place out like uh, equal parts onto your plastic mixing surface. You don't need very much at all, as you can see here. And I'm just going to use the front of this to mix them up. And also start a timer. And I'm going to mix these for mix them up for one minute. It's been one minute now. I'm pretty confident that it is uh, thoroughly mixed up, so I'm going to move over to, over to the little uh, chips here. And with the back of my scraper, let me just clean this off. Taking about one more minute, I'm going to apply the compound directly to the chip in about one paper's thickness. So I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it. I'm just going to double check to make sure I don't have any kind of debris on the surface of this guy. I'll place it on top like this and push down gently. Twist it back and forth a few times just to make sure that it's seated and try and get some of the air bubbles out. And just like that. Then I'll place a weight or something on top, on top of it for one hour. Looks like I finally found a use for my coin collection. And repeat the process for the remaining chips. I'm just going to do uh, four right now, let those dry for an hour, take them off, and do the other four.
So it's been about an hour now since I put the last four on here. So I can go ahead and take the weights off. And then just to test that each one is held down securely, I'll just give it a little gentle tug. With heat sinks on all these little chips, uh, it's time to move on to the processor. But right before I put uh, heat sink compound directly on the processor, I'm going to show you how to tint this surface here on the uh, heat sink itself. And what tinting does, you'll notice there's a bunch of little microscopic like grooves and valleys on the surface. Uh, tinting basically fills those in before you put the processor and the heat sink together. And it's just supposed to lessen the break-in period and just uh, improve uh, heat conduction as well between the two surfaces. So what you want to do is just apply a super, super tiny amount of uh, thermal paste to the surface there, just like that. You barely need, any need anything, and you're just going to spread it out in uh, pretty much as thin of a layer as you possibly can. Here's a slightly better view of it, and uh, you notice that this layer is pretty much semi-transparent, which is exactly what you want. It's not meant to cover it, it's meant to just fill in the grooves. And with the processor, we're going to pretty much do the same thing, except we're going to use a little more thermal compound. So squeeze out, you know, an amount equal to about one-third of one of those copper BBs. So, you know, about like that. And we're just going to spread it out pretty evenly over the entire thing, so you should have a layer about the uh, thickness of a sheet of paper covering the entire chip. One quick thing you should check is uh, make sure that all four contacting points here are at about the same level because if one of them is down too far down or too far up uh, it'll actually put sort of an uneven pressure on the board and it, it can actually only make uh, partial contact with the chip. So it's happened to me a couple times so just make sure they're all at about the same level and if they're not you can always uh, just tweak them up a little bit or down just to even them out. I found the easiest way to assemble everything is just to uh, Flip the heatsink upside down and just place the video card on top, making sure you align the holes here so that it contacts the processor evenly, and just like that. And then just take your screws and uh, screw it back together. When you're tightening down the screws, make sure you tighten them down in a crisscross pattern, that way you just avoid lifting the processor off the heatsink in one direction or the other. And here it is, all completed. You might notice this uh, cooling thing I have on top, these set of fans, that's just from the original uh, cooler. I just stripped those off and zip tied them on here. And they just plug into the original power ports. And uh, yeah, so I have video card, heat sink, and fans. It's uh, quite the monsterish unit. And they should keep my little uh, processor about as cool as I can get without going water cooling. So yeah, anyways, I'm gonna plug it in and see how it works.